Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here and you're interested in photo editing as well as video editing, go ahead and subscribe to my channel to see more content like this. In today's video, we'll be comparing the difference between the easy skin retouching function and frequency separation in Retouch Pro Photoshop extension panel. Let's see which of these functions perform well on different images that we'll throw at them. And again, just a quick disclaimer, I'm not trying to be the best portrait retoucher out there. I'm just showing you what this panel can do and how I would normally use it. Feel free to apply your own techniques or workflow when using this panel. If you'd like to purchase this panel, click the link on the video description and use my coupon code to get a 5% discount. Alright, let's get started. So let's start with the first image right here. And we click on the easy skin retouching function. Then we click on the white brush down here and start painting on the face. As you can see, it really didn't do a good job smoothing out the face. So basically, we cannot use this easy function on this image. So let's go ahead and delete this layer. Let's now try frequency separation. We expand the layer down here. Temporarily hide the high layer, then click on the low layer. Then we select the mixer brush tool right here. You can play around with these settings right here on top, but for the sake of this demo, let's just go with the default. Then we start painting on the skin. What the mixer brush does is it blends all the colors together. You might need to use a large brush for this, and it may require a lot of trial and error. Just do single brush strokes at a time, and do it in one direction. This requires time and a lot of practice, but for this demo, I'm just doing it quickly. So if you noticed, it has blended the skin tones evenly. I know I could have done better, but for the sake of saving time, this will do for now. Once we're satisfied with the blending of the skin tones, we unhide the high layer to add the skin texture. Let me just zoom out to see how it looks. Alright, this looks good. This is the original image. And this is with the frequency separation. So what do you think? If you ask me, the function did pretty well. We can even decrease the opacity right here if needed. Or use the black brush and paint on the mask to remove some of the effect. I feel like it's lacking some skin texture, so let's add some by clicking the texture function right here. We select the white brush, then paint on the areas that we want to add texture, like so. Okay, we're done. Now I'm not sure if you can see it, but it did add a subtle amount of skin texture. Let me hide this layer so you can see. Alright, I missed a few spots, so let me just add more texture right here. And that's it! We can click on the Finish tab and save this image. Let's select For Web and keep its original size. Assign a name and click Save. And just for comparison, here is the original image and this is the final retouched image. Alright, let's proceed with the second example. This time, let's duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl J. Select the Spot Healing Brush tool, and then let's remove the distracting blemishes and dark spots. Let me just fast forward this step. And as for the scar on the forehead, select the Patch tool, Draw a selection around it, then drag a smooth area to replace a sample. And now the scar is gone. This is the original image, and this is with all the skin imperfections removed. We can now apply the easy skin function right here. Then we paint on the face. I will fast forward this step as well.
Alright, I think I'm done. This is the before. This is with easy function. Obviously, this looks fake and unnatural. So let's decrease the opacity to about 50%. Now this looks more natural. Let's temporarily hide the easy layer right here, and this time, use the frequency separation function. Then we expand the layer right here, temporarily hide the high layer, and select the low layer. Then select the mixer brush tool, and brush accordingly to blend the colors well. Again. This requires time and may take a lot of trial and error, so be careful. And if you messed up, it's okay. Just go back and redo it until you get it right. Okay, that should do it. And now we can show the texture layer. This is the original image. And this is with the frequency separation. Now, I know I messed up on the cheeks, but like I said, I did this fairly quickly. So this is the frequency separation, and this is with the easy function. Which one did a better job? Comment down below. Let's zoom in. This is frequency separation. This is the easy function. This is the frequency separation, and this is with the easy function. Alright, let's try it with this image. Again, let's duplicate the layer and start removing the skin imperfections using the spot healing brush tool. Let me fast forward this. Before, after. Now let's run the easy function and paint on the face using the white brush. Now let's switch to the black brush and paint on the areas to recover the lost details. This is the before, and this is with the easy function. Let's zoom in. Before, after. Not bad, right? Now why don't we add some texture? And I'm feeling lazy, so let's just copy the mask below. Select the mask, hold the Alt key, and drag it to the mask above. Then click yes to replace the mask. Now the texture is way too much, so let's decrease the opacity to about 40%. Alright, this looks good. Let's group the easy and texture layer together. This is the before. After. Let's zoom in. Before. After. Let's hide this layer above and run the frequency separation. And let's just rename this layer above as easy, so we know what this is. Then let's expand the layer below, hide the high layer, and select the low layer. Okay, let me just pause this video for a second. Remember on our first two examples, we used the mixer brush tool to blend the skin tones. This time, we will use another method. We go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters, and click OK. Then we go back to Filter, Blur, Surface Blur. Alright, I'm already liking the default values for the Surface Blur, so let's just leave it as it is. Then click OK. Now let's unhide the high layer. 
and decrease the opacity of the frequency separation to around 50%. This is the before. This is after. It's still too much, so let's decrease it some more. Around 30% looks better. Let's zoom in. This is without frequency separation, with frequency separation. Now I think the effect is too subtle, so let's just bump the opacity to 40%. Okay, this is perfect. So this is the easy function. And this is the frequency separation. Which effect looks better? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. So that is the difference between the easy function and frequency separation. Each tool is used for different purposes, and both of them apply a different effect. But it is still entirely up to you on how you apply and use these functions. Just don't rush editing like I did. Face retouching requires precision, time, and a lot of practice. Just keep using the panel until you get the hang of it. If you have questions or suggestions about the Retouch Pro panel, comment down below and we'll try to help you. And again, use my coupon code to get a 5% off on your next purchase. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and click on the bell icon to turn on notifications. Thank you for watching.